Nancy Green Rain was named a conservative senator. This month, she retires from the Red Chamber. I joined her in her parliamentary office for an exit interview earlier today. Well, she's retired. A couple of weeks ago, Senator Nancy Green Rain is, uh, you've been gone, what, a couple of weeks now? Now, look, it was yep. just yesterday you won the giant slalom, so you can't be 75. Why are you retiring? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're retiring. I'm, but you I want to get your thought. I want to get your thoughts on this. You have been an Olympic champion. You've been uh, run ski resorts. You've been a mother of twins. You've done all these things. Quite a list. How does the Senate play into that? Has this been a highlight, or how do you look at it? You know, it was a great opportunity for public service, and I I really did enjoy it. You know, it was a lot of learning experience, and uh, but the committee work is is fascinating. Mm. And reviewing the legislation is very interesting and actually being able to ask the right questions at the right time and, and focus on things has been really good. Careening down a hill is exciting. Sitting in a Senate committee is not exciting. You, you, you know, <laughs> it's, <exciting. laughs> it's, it's funny. You just drop in and out. Yeah. So it's not the same. But when you, when you, you decide as a committee what you're going to study and then you go at it and you're really trying to come up with some public policy solutions, and I find it very interesting. Sometimes they don't get accepted, and that's a little disappointing. But. This guy back here, guy named Stephen yep. Harper, he appointed you nine years yep. ago, and I'm curious, Then, back then the Senate was partisan, or at least acted as a partisan um, uh, chamber. Now it's populated by supposed independents. Does it work better now than before, or worse? You know, politics is partisan. You know, in order to debate, you need two sides, right. and you need to the debating process brings out both points of view and eventually you come to a consensus usually. Mm -hmm. um, and so politics is partisan. I can't imagine saying we want to appoint senators who have never been involved politically. They've gone through their life with their head in the sand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. So it's a mistake. I, it you know what? I think the, the way our Fathers of Confeder Confederation set it up was pretty good mm -hmm. because basically you've got the elected chamber and they are supreme. The appointed chamber is an advisory council. It's like kind of like a think tank, mm -hmm. and it reviews policy and it catches mistakes and things like that. And those people should be wise. I think they should be in the twilight of their career because mm -hmm. if you appoint them at 30, they stay until they're 75. That's way too long. But that's their that's their role, and I think it works. But Stephen Harper didn't always appoint Class A candidates. Well, he really... You being the notable exception. No, no, no. Listen, I think Mr. Harper, and he was a wonderful prime minister, and I have a lot of respect for him, but he was so fixated on having an elected Senate. But that's what they have in the States, and they have gridlock mm -hmm. because there's two elected bodies, and they fight. Ours is really quite a little bit different, and it works. So in my view, he made a mistake leaving 18 unfilled Senate seats as he went into an election. Right. And... I think it would be much better if the Prime Minister takes the job seriously and as a seat becomes empty, they've been looking. You know, I know my 75th birth date, so they can do the work in ahead, ahead of time. What, what has been the highlight of your career in the Senate? You've done the Child Protection or Child Health Protection Act. Uh, is that going to get through before you, before uh, you know, this it's, house rises? It's, the, the finish line is in sight. It's got uh, the report stage and the third reading in the House of Commons yeah. to go, and then it'll get through. And what's that do exactly? Tell our viewers what that does. That it's the Child Health Protection Act. It's to prohibit the targeted marketing of junk food to kids. And parents relate to that. Everybody relates to that. Those kids don't know that they're being brainwashed. But Hold the on, advertisers. You sold Mars bars. That's not health food. But we you didn't target little kids. <laughs> oh, okay. The advertisers know if they get brand loyalty before the age of 10, uh. they've got a customer for life. I mean, you probably remember the breakfast cereal you ate and. Captain knows? Crunch, you know, yeah, all yeah, exactly. the way. That wasn't exactly health food. No. So, so um, you know, it's not about telling the parents they can't buy what they want for their kids. It's just. Hundreds of millions of dollars are spent targeting little kids, and it's the consequences are we've got uh, you know twenty percent of kids are really fighting weight problems at mm. little, little children. Exactly. Obesity was unheard of. I know type two diabetes. Brian. What's Nancy Green Ray do now? What are you doing? What are you going to be doing in the future? You're nowhere near ready to put up your feet and call it a day, are you? No, no, no. I I'm <laughs> still keeping my 
my day job. I, I'll give you my card. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Skiing. Are you, are you still skiing much? I'm the director of skiing at Sun Peaks Resort. <laughs> okay. I, I took a pay cut and I went from 130 days to 80 <laughs> last year, and I'll go back up to 130 or maybe do a little traveling for skiing as well. And yeah, no. My husband and I love to stay active and fit. He's the mayor of Sun Peaks. Okay. So we're very involved in the community and we love that. And I'll well, go back there. But I'll, the... I'll keep my eye on what's happening down here. I'm sure I'll you watch will. you on the TV. All right. Uh, Canadian athlete of the 20th century, Senator Nancy Greenrain. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.